David Yost here with Yost Agency. Thanks for tuning in. Today we'd like to visit with you about income tax. Now I know that's a subject that mm, most of us really don't like to talk about. Matter of fact, many of us when we talk about it we get fired up. Well, maybe we'll get fired up before we're done today as well. Now first of all my disclosures, this is not specific income tax or investment advice. This is educational in nature. Its real purpose is for to, to give you cause to think about your plans, uh, to add more information into your thought process so you can make better decisions, therefore be in a better financial place. So with that, let's take a look at our income tax system. Uh, we'll go over a little bit of the history of it, uh, where we've been, where we are today, and we'll talk about where we might go down the road. So first of all, the income tax as we know it started in 1913. We uh, started off with a 7% income tax rate. Now, that didn't seem too bad. You know, 7%. Today's world, that's pretty good. But that only lasted two years before the government increased taxes. As a matter of fact, they doubled it in two years. Does that surprise you? Well, it wouldn't surprise us today, but back then, it probably was a surprise. Once the government figured out how to collect the revenue, all holds barred. Bar the door, Katie, however you want to say it. Um, they knew they could run with it, and run with it they did. So people ask me, well, okay, so, you know, they uh, already figured out how to double it. What is the highest and when was that uh, tax rate? So today, I want to visit with you about the highest tax rate that we had allowed by law. And so I'm going to talk about the top tax brackets. And the reason I'm talking about the top tax brackets is because all the other brackets below that came along with it. So if they raised the top, they raised them all. So let's take a look at the highest tax rate that we had in the United States was in 1952 through 53, 92%. Think about that. So once you hit the top tax rate, 92 cents out of every dollar that you earned went to Uncle Sam. Not a lot of incentive to earn more or do better. Ah, but, you know, they decided that was just too much. So we had a tax reduction. They lowered tax rates in 1954. That lasted through 1963. Well, you know, that seems all right, you know, government's lowering rates. They lowered it to 91%. Yeah, the tax reduction was 1%. Can I get a whoop de do? Man, I bet you the politicians patted themselves on the back. So, 54 to 63, we had a top tax bracket of 91%. Let's jump forward through history. And in 1980, we still had a 70% top tax bracket. Still pretty steep. It wasn't until the Tax Reform Act of 1986 that we got them dropped down to 50%. Well, it's better than 92. 50% is better than 70. So we kind of seen a, a boom in the economy um, when we lowered it, you know, from the 91 to 70 to 50, uh, that all boosted the economy. Uh, people were feeling a little bit better about uh, the economy and taxes in general and, and uh, what the government was taking. Well, here recently, um, we had uh, the Tax Reform Act of 2018. So as I'm shooting this video, uh, we're in August, mid-August 2018, so we've seen some of the effects of uh, the Tax Reduction Act of 2018. 
in the top tax bracket was lowered to 37%. Okay? So just as they raise the top tax bracket and all the other brackets come along with it, when they lower it, it works pretty much the same. Maybe not exactly, but typically all the brackets are lower um, and we're paying less income tax as a percentage today uh, than we have for quite some time in that. And we're seeing some of the effects of, of that in the economy, in the markets, uh, employment, businesses. Um, it's, it's all doing better, so to speak, uh, than what we were. So one of the things that, that we want to visit about, um, and, and especially what's happening now, and it's, it, everybody says, you know, it's, it's dangerous to talk politics or religion, and I generally end up talking about both. So the politics of this, one aspect I should say, is yes, they lowered it, but in that tax act, it's set to go away. In other words, they already have a provision for it to go back to what it was prior to that act. Well, it's hard to do any long-term planning when you know that, um, or when it seems that way. Now the politicians are all scrambling and saying, hey, we want to make this permanent. You know, we, we don't want it to go back to the way it was, so we're going to make this permanent. Well, you know this, but it stares us right in the face. It's kind of glaring when we look at it this way. Over the years, really, there's nothing permanent in the tax acts, in our tax rates. They're going to change it. It's going to get changed one way or another, depending on what the government needs at that time. And speaking of that, here's one of the big factors in that is our debt, the national debt, is 20 plus trillion. I'm not even sure I know how to spell trillion dollars. That's the national debt. How do they pay that? How does the government cover that debt? It's through revenue, through taxes. And so they have to generate enough revenue to pay the debt or pay it down or at least pay the interest on it. Okay? So what we've seen here is when we lower taxes, the brackets, it does occasionally spur more economic growth and activity, which means there's more revenues. Even though we're paying a lower percentage on it, there's more revenue being generated in our economy, therefore more revenue generated for the government. Sounds like a good thing. But once again, those things don't last. We, we get rolling along and then our spending habits, and when I say our spending habits, I'm talking about the government. Uh, the spending habits increase, pick up. Uh, we need money for this, we need money for that. So, therefore, the taxes have to be raised in order to generate that. The other item I want you to think about is we've had more years at 50% or higher in our top income tax rate than we have had less. So maybe I can say that a little bit better. Throughout history, our top tax bracket has been 50% or higher much longer for many more years than it has been below 50%. So today we're at 37 and we got $20 trillion debt. Where do you think taxes are going to go? Are they going to go even lower? Are they going to go higher? Now the politicians are all talking about, you know, they want to make uh, taxes lower. And they want to do this, make it permanent thing. Well, we can all smile and grin and say, yeah, sure. You know, um, 
You can try to fool us, but we know this has to be taken care of. We know there are things that come up in the budget. Um, our personal budgets are the same way. There's things that come up. We need money to cover those. So the U.S. government, the budget is the same way. So what I want you to think about today is retirement is how far away? 10, 20, 30 years away? You're going to be in retirement for 10, 20, 30 years. So that's a long time. And tax rates are going to change. We know that. They're not always going to be this low. The question that we really have is, are we paying about as low of income tax now, after the 2018 Act, than you and I ever will in our lifetime? Oh, but David, David, the plan is, you know, to, to deduct, put this money away, and at retirement, we'll be in the lower tax bracket. Hmm, doesn't always work that way. In my years of preparing income taxes, in my years of helping people plan for retirement and go through retirement, it doesn't work that way. A couple reasons. They keep changing the rules on us. And your traditional IRAs and 401ks, uh, the government says you have to start taking money out of those at age 70 and a half, whether you're ready to or not, whether it's to your advantage or not, you have to start taking money out. Well, another rule change that came about was that's going to be added into your income. And that could make your Social Security income taxable. 50% of that income could become taxable. Up to 85% could be taxable. So here we've done all this planning. We deferred this income. We deferred the taxes. And now we take the income and that's causing us a burden. I can't tell you the number of people that I've sat with and visited about. And when it comes to retirement, and after a year or two of retirement, they see the tax consequences. They wish they'd never done that IRA or that 401k. And it just goes, wait a minute, no, you, you got this money set aside. Yes, it's going to cause you some taxes, but you still are further ahead. But are they? If you're deducting it at 37% and you have to pay 50% or 70% when you take that money, does that make any sense? Did you really save any money? So there's a lot more that goes into this. And so tax deferred, like in your traditional IRAs and 401ks, really means you're going to delay the tax calculation. And what is that tax calculation going to be? Nobody knows. What do we think? Do we think taxes are going to be higher? That would be the trend because we've had more years at 50% and above. we got this record all-time debt that we need to take care of. So, we have this knowledge, David. Yeah, okay. So, taxes are going to be higher. Um, we're going to have to plan for, you know, this tax-deferred income being taxable. But is there, you know, what can I do about it? Well, there are choices that you have. There are choices that you can make to lower that taxable income. We talk about, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And one of those baskets is tax-deferred which means it's going to all be taxable when it comes out. You do have choices, and those choices are tax-advantaged and tax-free. Those are a couple of the choices that you have when saving for retirement. And there are vehicles that can help you get to that so that you can manage this better. Now, am I saying put, you know, don't put any of your eggs in the 401k or traditional IRAs? No. But what I'm also saying is, don't put all of your eggs in those baskets, okay? Visit with us. We can show you the choices and we can show you how they work. 
In part two of our income tax video, we're going to talk about diversifying your retirement income and how important this can be going forward. Again, are we at the lowest bracket that we're going to see during our lifetimes? It's possible. Is, what are the odds of tax rates going up? I think they're fairly good, don't you? Hey, we wanted to touch base on income tax and things for you to think about. And that's really what this is about, is, is give you some information, cause you to think. We would love to visit with you and help you discover are those solutions, those other solutions we talked about, tax advantaged, tax free income, are those okay for me? Do they fit my plan? That's what we do. We'll sit down, we'll visit with you and see if that's an alternative or a better choice for you. Check out our website, yostagency.com. Looking forward to visiting with you down the road. Thank you.